go. Okay, we're back here just finishing up. Uh, I wanted to save some of your time, my time, on massaging this a little further. Just about done. I got a little bit more massaging to do. Also, uh, the thing that's kind of nice about having this little trough here, uh, if you happen to get too much resin in there, and I may just do that here in a minute, it's nice to just take your finger like this and you can squeegee out any excess, which is uh, handy uh, using this trough the way it is. It's that D shape, makes it makes it handy when you oh, when you uh, are finishing up and you happen to get too much resin in there by chance. It's uh, really handy just to take your finger and whereas if you had a big square a big square trough might be more difficult to get extra resin out of it. As you can see here, I'll show you here in a second if I can get some more resin, but I think we're getting just about ready to pull it out of here, get it in the control surface, which is sort of a trick. I come up with some ideas uh, that have worked for me. Uh, probably other ways of doing that as well. Uh, However, uh, what I've come up with does work, and I don't do this every day. So, uh, for now, this is the best idea I come up with. It does work pretty good. I've been really happy with the results. It creates a really a strong, strong trailing edge. Okay, I'm going to put a lot of down pressure in there just to make sure I can focus to get all of that carbon fiber soaked up. And for what it's worth right now, I must have a total of about 200 grams of uh, resin in this nine and a half foot long strip. I can't tell you right off the weight of the carbon fiber. However, uh, as everybody knows, it's much lighter than aluminum. And uh, a little bit dry down here on this end. Another, another point that I'm observing, uh, first or second one of these that I did, I, I I pressure and squeegeed out so much resin, I think that it was so dry, uh, it didn't, it didn't, it was, it was not very wet. Uh, another point mentioned, between the two aluminum surfaces, I have previously already have lightly sanded that surface. Uh, the inside of my control surface has been primed and so I didn't want to be trying to stick uh, this, this particular cotton fiber to the prime surface, so I've already sanded off that primer, and I would not think it would be wise to try to fly this control surface without any rivets in it. I'd like to put the rivets in it after it's been set up, that way it's your your primary structural uh, finish on the control surface. See like this here, you take your finger and we can just run down here and squeegee out any excess resin. And that makes it handy because we're also, you're forcing it down into that V and it gets out. Okay, so now we're ready to move over. And what I'm going to do is set up here a stand. This will be kind of interesting for you. Uh, we'll take this, carry it over here. Get it set about right where we're going to be transferring it 
into the control surface, which I've already pre pre prepped pre prepped with plastic on the top and bottom just to keep the excess resin from sticking to parts we don't want it to be stuck to. Uh, anyway, I'm going to take and wipe off my little excessive resin off the hands here. So, as you can see here, uh, th this is what we're looking at. And the, you can see the inside's been primed, but this, these two surfaces here and here have been sanded off. So, what I'm going to attempt to do, get my stir stick here. is get this wad out of here and get started. So, as you can see here, this is a wad, it's about the size of my small finger. That's not really squashed yet. But as you can see, with the fibers all going in the same direction, we can, it'll squash out nicely like this. So when these two surfaces come together, it'll find its own happy position. And so what we're going to do, it gets a little messy here for a while, is I'm going to pull this apart again. And you can see the two ribs here are short from the trailing edge, about three quarters of an inch, because we want to lay this at that point and it should fill up into the back bottom end of those of those two ribs there so now i'm just going to work my way along here and transfer this out of this groove into um, into the control surfaces And then once we get it in there, then we can massage it a little further. Right now we just want to get it transferred in there and we'll maneuver it around here. I'll show you in a second what we're going to do once we get it in there. done this a couple different ways. So far this has been the most successful way i found to transfer it to get it in there with the minimum amount of hassle. As you can see it's kind of a messy. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And we can get this out of the way. Working better. Okay, now the trick is, well it's not a trick, it's just a matter of what I like to do is, well it looks like this got pulled down that way, I'm going to try and pull it. Pull it back. I've got a little extra to cut off later off of each end. But as you see here, there's the ends of the ribs. So this will eventually mash out to form this little triangle here. And as some of it mashes out, it'll just be trimmed off later. But um, so what I want to do is kind of go along and kind of pre-form with my fingers, uh, roughly the, the rough triangle that we're going to be ultimately wanting to have and massage it in. So this is where you just, it's not any skill, but it's just a matter of trying to better position that carbon fiber wad to the approximate shape it's gonna be once we clamp these 
two surfaces. Now, underneath here is a piece of channel, which is a perfectly straight uh, piece of channel aluminum, which is perfectly straight. We'll put another piece on top here, clamp it together. That way, this thing will be absolutely positively straight and flat. Uh, and so that way we don't need any really jig to hold it while we drill holes for rivets. And as we've all probably experienced, when you're, when you're working with that, it tends to want to, as you drill holes, things want to shift and move, and then you have a, a, a part that's not particularly flat or straight. Yeah, okay. Must have had a couple of fibers there twisted because I had a lump that didn't really want to massage out. Took a little more pressure to get the get it to flatten out the way I my fingers feel it ought to be. Okay, so I'm going to do one other little thing here, which normally you would not do, is I'm going to cut off the end for that piece, which I could do it and I'll saw later, but I have a use for this here on another experiment, so 